Historically, we've done everything in sub subtractive. Uh, so if you think about an artist going back to the, the Stone Age, you started with a big rock and you wound up with a small rock. You chipped away a lot to get to what you wanted. This allows you to sort of visualize what you want and just build that. Basically, it takes any part that you think about, just think about it in layers. And this thing only worries about one, making one layer at a time. So when you come over here, put the powder in these hoppers, gravity allows it to feed down, and then there's a spreader bar that takes that and, and uh, basically provides a very fine layer of powder. And then the E-beam, electron beam, comes and traces the part, the layer, if you will, that, that you want. And then when it's finished with that, it basically sinks down, applies a whole new layer of powder, and just keeps repeating that process until it builds the three-dimensional shape that you're looking for. We're a long way from anywhere uh, in Australia, so we can't be okay in a bunch of things. We've actually got to be really good in a couple things. So we've decided we're really good in metal powders and really good in the simulation side of it. And then in addition to our know-how, we make the units run better, faster, smarter. And uh, then Australia now is producing parts as opposed to mineral sands. Well, we had a 3D printer when I first got out of school, the company that I worked for. It had the very, very early one, and this was 1995. And, and it looked cool because it was just this clear plastic goo it was like a liquid and a laser would come down and trace out what it wanted and then when it was finished the part would rise up out of the goo so it just looked very you know futuristic by today's standards you know it's it's just appalling <laughs> you know i mean it's not appalling but it it certainly doesn't do what the current you know machines can do there's been lots of people working on it for you know a long period of time however the data is now showing that Every year, more and more, the technology is being used for manufacturing as opposed to prototyping, which is key because manufacturing and prototyping sort of have opposite requirements. You know, prototyping, you want to make something once just to, for effect, and it may not have to have any functionality. Manufacturing, you want to make it, this, the hundredth one needs to be the same as the thousandth one, needs to be the same as the millionth one. It just needs to be very robust. Everything's gotten more complicated. And if you look at the DC-3, you know, back in the 50s, that plane was made with entirely one aluminum alloy. And now, when you look at a 787, it's got composite structure on it, it's got titanium, it's got multiple different titanium alloys, it's got multiple different aluminum alloys, and kind of what we do here, it's, it's kind of recognizing how we can make those things better. We can now sort of give those companies a unique alloy that only maybe does what they want to do with it. And it gives them another area to compete on. And, Way back in the 50s and 60s, that's exactly what they used to do. So people, I think, have, have thought that metals have seen their day, but we're, we constantly see this everything old is new again. So for a materials engineer, it's a fantastic time. 